I just did that hill and uh, I feel very strongly I've earned some bragging rights. Oh yeah! I've always been really active. My husband and I were active, and when we had children, we brought that into our lifestyle. So as a family, everything revolved around activities. We loved being in the mountains. We just embrace every day. We love to be uh, participants in life rather than spectators. I would describe Melinda as someone who, she fills everyone's bucket. She was a very successful salon owner. She had a, a terrific business in our home. She made them feel good on the inside, as well as make them look good on the outside. But they just felt good about themselves after they left. In 1999, I was rear-ended by a distracted driver and it broke my neck and caused a spinal cord injury. And that injury ended my career and also ended my snowboarding and my skiing. It took re redefining myself. And I remember asking my physical therapist saying, you know, I, I know I'll never snowboard again, but can you get me back up on skis? We worked on it for two and a half years, and he got me back up on skis. Benjamin bought us season passes to Deer Valley. We were so excited. And that evening, we were rear-ended the second time, and it broke my neck and resulted in quadriplegia. In um, December of 2003, my wife is a quadriplegic. She is paralyzed from her eyes down. It was devastating. I found myself in a situation worse than before. And with that first moment on the mountain, I felt like that was my first step to finding myself again. And now I was lost more than ever but they were able to reconstruct my neck and re restore blood flow to my spinal cord. She had to learn how to use her entire body all over again, and it took years and years of physical therapy for her to do just the smallest of things, walk up and down stairs, you know, pick up a pencil, pick up a, a glass of water without spilling it. I had worked for over five years to learn how to walk again, and to be able to use my body so I could have a semblance of freedom. So I had achieved that. I was able to be independent. And then I was rear-ended a third time. This time, the spinal cord was injured but the left carotid artery was torn into places, resulting in a massive stroke, which paralyzed my right side. Once again, I find myself in new territory. I remember this coming to in the hospital and looking at my sweetheart and with his coaxing, I was finally able to get these words out. Sweetheart, this is bigger than me. I can't do this anymore. And of course, he looked at me and he smiled and said, Oh! You have beat so much more than this. You're going to beat this too. For the first time, you know, I heard her say, I can't do this. This is too big. And I'm thinking, no, it's not. You, you've come through worse than this. There's so many times that she's, she's done this. Um, she, you know, 
literally getting knocked down and then coming back again with always that same resolve. Once again, I was redefining who I was, who do I want to be. The first moment I walked in to the NAC, it was at the Ski and Snowboard Center. I stood in the middle of the floor and there were so many people with such a broad range of disabilities. And I feel like time stopped and I stood there and tears came to my eyes and all I could think is I don't want to be disabled. And I can remember looking down at the floor and then looking up as a young man who is an amputee, smiled and scooted across the floor in his one ski boot, just as proud as could be. My life changed at that moment. He showed me who I wanted to be. And the NAC was there to help me on this journey of becoming. As Benjamin said and to me in the hospital, you can do this. The NAC says to me, you can do this. You can get past this difficult moment. So the power of what they do, the power of what they offer, doesn't end when you leave the activity. It becomes a part of you. The National Ability Center, it's been a, a big, big part of our lives. It's brought back a part of our lives that we thought would be gone forever. To be out there skiing with her, it's hard to put into words the power of what the NAC's work looks like. Um, in the moment, you know, you're, you're cruising down the hill with this beautiful, incredible, inspiring person who has endured more than any person should ever have to endure in, in 10 lifetimes. And she's got this huge smile on her face and she's skiing better than you are. <laughs> it seems too good to be true, uh, and, and it's not. And, and that's thanks to the work that the NAC does. The instructors, their encouragement, their joy for you, their celebrations with you, Woo! become a part of you, that you take with you, that empower you. That was so awesome. <laughs> Whether you're at the actual National Ability Center or you're on the mountains skiing with someone volunteering or just talking to people that take part in the programs there or their families, there is this collective spirit. You feel this sense of how life-changing it is. To have that moment that was <laughs> when you know you've got it right and you beat it. <laughs> That's freedom. <laughs> I'm no longer going to be living life on the sidelines. I'm going to engage it once again and they're going to help me. And my sweetheart is at my side. And look at all these examples of amazement that I have to draw from. That's what the NAC is.